All right. What is up, everyone? Uh, very excited to bring you today's video. I've been getting tons of questions about TLT. You guys know I cover TLT and I drop videos on it every single month. Um, and we're going to go over four reasons why yields are rising, causing TLT to drop. OK, um, those are going to be economic resilience and inflation concerns. There's a market reassessment in Federal Reserve policies. There's the election impact in fiscal policy. And then there's global and geopolitical factors. So we're going to break all of those down in detail. I've done lots of research on the fundamental reasons why TLT is crashing, and we're going to dive into them in today's video. It's not going to be so much technical analysis. Um, you guys can watch my previous technical analysis video I did on TLT, or you can look forward to the next technical analysis video on TLT that will co be coming out within the next week or so. Now, um, we'll dive into all of these, okay, in terms of economic resilience and inflation concerns. Uh, we'll show some charts to kind of uh, in data to back up these things and show you guys what it is exactly that we're looking at and what the market's looking at in terms of the market reassessment and the Federal Reserve policies. Um, we'll look at the spike in the 10-year Treasury yields and the dollar. Um, we'll talk about the SCP, the Summary of Economic Projections. And then where, you know, the probabilities are currently. Um, and we'll talk about the difference, okay? There's been a very dramatic difference um, in where rates were projected to be versus one month ago, okay? So in one month, we saw a very big change. And in one month, TLT has dropped a lot. We'll talk about the election impact as well. Um, there's a very close correlation to Trump and tens, okay? Which is basically the 10-year Treasury yield and Trump um, as the, you know, the probabilities of Trump winning this election have started to rise. So have the Treasury yields. Uh, that also will be explained in today's video. And then we'll talk about the global and geopolitical factors. Um, S&P Global Standard & Poor's has a nice chart here, really just covering a lot of um, the global and geopolitical risks um, you know, to the country and to the U.S. stock market. So it'll be a really good video. Uh, please be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, help me get to 10K. All right, I'm trying to get to 10K subscribers by the end of the year. Uh, I only need, you know, less than a thousand. All right, so help me get there, please. Now, as always, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So be sure to read through the disclaimer. And let's go ahead and start off here with economic resilience and inflation concerns as reason number one while yields are rising. So despite the Federal Reserve's recent decision to cut the federal funds rate by 50 basis points, Treasury yields have risen due to the underlying strength of the U.S. economy. Economic indicators such as robust GDP growth and strong retail sales suggest that the economy is performing well. This economic resilience has led to increased demand for credit, pushing yields higher. Now, additionally, and we're going to come back to this line here in a second, okay, increased demand, right, because we're going to dive into the supply and demand uh, dynamics of the bond market uh, a little bit later. But additionally, while inflation rates have shown signs of cooling, unexpected rises in producer inflation and strong consumer demand have raised concerns about persistent inflationary pressures. These inflationary concerns have contributed to higher yields as investors demand greater compensation for future inflation. Okay, so increased demand. Right. And those investors are also demanding greater yields. All right. Um, now, if we take a look at GDP and real GDP, we can see the those are all on a nice steady incline. Right. Those are all rising very nicely here. Um, you know, via the latest numbers, we see those are continuing to go up. So um, the one of the simple mechanics of the bond market is, hey, if there's a strong economy, then yields are tend typically higher. All right. And when the economy is weak, right, or a lot of people think we're going to we're in the middle of a recession or we're not going to stick a soft landing and we're going to go into a hard landing and get this really bad recession. Well, that's when yields typically go lower. All right. And a lot of the data right now that economists and analysts and, you know, bond market investors, which the bond market is massive. OK, um, tons and tons of money in there uh, suggest that the economy is very strong. Right. And this is some of the data that they're looking at. Um, if we look at real public consumption, this is still just skyrocketing right here. All right. We live in a consumer based economy. All right. And the consumer is what really drives the economy in America. And there's no signs of, of spending down, of consuming, uh, slowing down at all. And when you look at the consumer confidence index, um, something like this we see is breaking out okay so i mean not that we're doing technical analysis on economic indicators 
But, you know, we see something like this. I mean, that's that's almost your textbook breakout, retest and enter. Right. We see the downtrend. We see a breakout retested that line go up. So consumer confidence is also rising right now. Um, believe it or not, you know, whatever your own opinions are. These are just some of the surveys and data that people are looking at, again, suggesting economic resilience. Now, <clears throat> CPI, we have core CPI in blue and the consumer price index regular CPI in orange here. We can see that both of those are heading down. The core is remaining a little bit more sticky than regular CPI. Uh, and you know we know that the Fed typically looks at the core CPI as well as PCE. Um, and when you look at the producer price index, uh, we mentioned earlier um, you know that that's been stronger, okay? And we've seen slight inflationary ticks in that. Uh, and this has just been on a steady uptrend as well here. Um, you know, not as aggressive as it was, uh, in the early, uh, you know, 2020s. But here we are just continuing to rise in there as well. And when you take a look at the unemployment numbers, it actually went down a little bit. Um, and this is really the big thing that I think could spark a recession, in my opinion, is the unemployment. All right. If, if, if we see a massive spike in unemployment, I've dropped videos about the SOM rule and the SOM indicator, um, you know, previously, those are the things where you really want to pay attention and watch out for. Um, but one thing that I want to highlight here is when you look at the employment to working age population numbers right here, we are still looking good, right? So you look at the number of, of, of people employed to the working age population, right? Look at where we're at. We've we've been trending up a little bit higher. We've started to pull back down here as we're starting to see, you know, inflation. Uh, I'm sorry, not inflation, but the unemployment numbers start to take up here a little bit. And we've been in a slight downtrend here, um, but there's nothing screaming that, um, you know, we're about to see a, a huge recession uh, in the labor market. So the labor market is still resilient. Um, it is weakening a little bit, but it is still resilient. Now, there was also a market reassessment. And, you know, when you dive into the Federal Reserve's policies, um, although the Fed signaled a downward trajectory for interest rates, the strong economic data and inflationary pressures have led investors to question the likelihood of further rate cuts. Rising treasury yields and a strengthening dollar have dampened risk sentiment. So that's another thing, too, is when you guys look at the DXY, the, the U.S. dollar index or the Dixie, um, that thing has been ripping as well. I mean, it's gone up six, seven, eight weeks, uh, you know, almost consecutively. It's been on a very, very strong uptrend, which typically is a headwind for things like gold or a headwind for things like the stock market even. Uh, and we're just not seeing that be the case, right? The S&P 500 is still continuing uh, to make new all-time highs and hovering, you know, near some of those all-time highs. I know recently we've seen a little bit of a pullback, but still. Um, now, <clears throat> This is causing investors to reassess the economic outlook. All right. Again, the strong September retail sales and a surge in the services sector have raised doubts about further rate cuts. The producer inflation rose more than expected in September, complicating the outlook for rate cuts. And that's what the main thing is, is really this is just all complicating. The market was trying to price in that the Fed, you know, was starting their rate cutting cycle and was going to be a little bit more aggressive um, you know, than, than what it is looking like right now. So the trajectory for rate cuts is going down. Okay. So meaning that we're probably going to get less rate cuts. So we're probably going to get rate cuts at a slower pace. And so when you think about the price action of something like TLT, TLT goes up when rates go down and yields go down. So if yields are going to go down less and go down slower, and that's what the market's pricing in, um, then you're going to see, you know, a, a drop and TLT when the market was pricing um, rates going down faster and rates going down quicker uh, or longer or, or in, a, in a shorter period of time. Now, this is just a simple chart here, um, you know, showing the U.S. 10 year Treasury yield in red. All right. And the U.S. dollar index here in green. And you can see both of these has been on a very, very strong uptrend uh, over the past month. Right. For longer than a month. Now. This is our SEP right here. Okay, we have the Fed federal uh, the federal funds rate. You can see um, you know their projections for 2025, 2026, 2027, all of these different things. You can look at the current target rates. Um, but what I think is really important is when you look here, and this is screaming higher for longer, right? And and what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at one month ago. What were the projections? Right around September 20th. What were the projections? 
we saw that 250 to 275 basis points was actually priced in at around 10%, right? 9.4%. Currently, it's at zero, right? Over here, we had 275 to 300 basis points. Look at where it was. It was at 25%, and now it's at zero. We had 300 to 325 basis points. This was at 34%, and it went to zero. So just think about that for a second, right? So the market was pricing in, you know, 9% odds of the Fed funds rate being at 250 to 275 basis points, right? So 2.5 to 2.75%. Um, you know, if you combine all of these together, right, you've got, um, you know, 43 plus about 26, really, this is so, so um, let's just call it almost 70% odds that the Fed funds rate was going to be between 2.5 to about 3.25, right? That's completely wiped out of the market now. Those odds all went to 0%. So the market was pricing in 70% odds, you know, that we were going to be much lower. If we take a look right here, the market was only pricing in 6%, 0.7%, and 0% odds on us going anywhere from being at 3.5 to 4.25. So we've seen a dramatic change, right? Now that is over 70%. We're at 34% uh, for projections of 3.5. We're at 31% for projections of 3.75. And we're at 14% at four, uh, four to four and a quarter. So a huge shift, right? And that big shift is the reason why TLT has been dropping so hard, okay, um, just from, you know, a mechanics standpoint of the bond market and understanding the mechanics, that's it. So these are things that you really want to pay attention to is, you know, go out and look at, um, you know, the summer 2025 uh, projections for the Fed funds rate probabilities, um, you know, use the, use the CME Fed watch tool, and that will give you um, you know, the mechanics of why, you know, the bond market may be moving up or down. And then the fundamental reasons are the things that we're covering in today's video um, that we've already touched on and going to continue to expand upon, such as the election impact. Um, so the upcoming U.S. election is also influencing Treasury yields throughout potential changes in fiscal policy. The candidates' different uh, economic policies can impact growth, inflation, and the fiscal deficit, affecting bond supply and demand dynamics. And we talked about those supply and di uh, demand dynamics earlier very briefly and said that we were going to touch back on those. And we're getting to that point now. But for instance, policies that increase the fiscal deficit could lead to higher bond yields due to increased government borrowing. Now, when you look at government debt, government debt has actually been going down since Q2 of 2024. All right. Now, what does this mean? Well, to me, what this means is that, um, you know, we already know that the Fed is essentially loosening um, policy. OK, so, um, you know, they haven't been doing quantitative tightening all right, anymore. They're letting stuff run off of the balance sheet. So that is going to lower, uh, you know, government debt. And what we're also seeing, in my opinion, is we're seeing this government debt go down and it's going down and people are demanding a higher yield, okay? So nobody is really wanting to buy U.S. Treasuries where they were um, and, you know, essentially how low they were when TLT was around its peak, okay? And the, the debt is going down and you're going to start to see this uptick potentially here as people in other countries start to see yields more attractive, right? They're really just waiting for higher yields, okay? Because in my opinion, the market's, are demand, they want to demand a higher yield, okay, if they want to buy U.S. debt. Um, and so we're at that point in time right now where the yields drop so much, uh, not, nothing crazy, okay, but you were able to get a, a, a nice yield before the Fed started cutting rates. And since then, um, you know, we've actually seen the rates go back up. And I think that the supply and demand, um, you know, impact is one of those things. But more importantly, this is just very hard to deny. So this is less opinion based. This is just facts right here. This is the Trump intent. So in white, we have the U.S. government 10 year Treasury yield. And then in red, we have, um, you know, you can bet on basically who's going to win the election in poly market via like futures and things like that. 
Um, and Donald Trump is going to be in the red line here. So we see that this bottomed in August. OK, this bottomed in August, the Trump odds of winning. Right. And when did we see the government debt top out in the summer? Right. In Q2 of 2024. So what we're seeing is, is, you know, since the summer, we've seen yields rise and we've also seen the odds of Trump winning the election rise dramatically here. OK, so the two of these things are very closely correlated. And when we talk about a strong economy and the economic resilience, people pricing in Trump, they think that there's going to be a stronger economy with Trump. Now, it's deeper than that as well. The policies of the two main candidates, um, you know, Harris and Trump, are expected to have different effects on economic growth and inflation. Trump's policies, such as lower taxes and trade barriers, could support domestic demand, but also increase inflationary pressures. This environment might require tighter monetary policy, leading to higher long-term bond yields. All right. Now, in contrast, Harris's policies are likely to be more aligned uh, with those of the current Biden administration, which could result in lower inflation expectations and potentially lower yields, although the impact is expected to be more neutral. Now, on top of this, the last and the fourth reason why we've seen yields rising are because of the global and geopolitical factors. Um, these uncertainties have added to market volatility, influencing investor behavior and driving yields higher. During periods of uncertainty, investors may seek safe haven assets like U.S. Treasuries, but concerns about fiscal policy and inflation can counteract this effect, leading to rising yields. OK, now, what are some of those things? Right. I mean, if we look here from Standard & Poor, this is a really great chart. So on the left, we have low impact, low likelihood. Um, on the right, we have low likelihood, high impact. And then on the top right hand corner, we have high likelihood, high impact. And then we have low impact and high likelihood over here. So energy security is in that low impact, high likelihood area. Um, but the major risks all right, of a high likelihood and high impact areas, these are cyber attacks. OK, think of what just happened when um, I believe it was CrowdStrike. You know, CrowdStrike said they didn't get hacked, said that it was part of an update. Um, but, you know, Microsoft went down. Airlines were down. Hotels were down. Um, you know, the whole world was really impacted very much due to that CrowdStrike um, you know, update problem that they had where things were not working properly. Uh, and we saw businesses across the world, not just the U.S., um, essentially being shut down and unable to operate. Um, that is going to have a very high impact on the U.S. economy. Um, there's also the U.S.-China relations and then climate risk. OK, those are the three big things um, that they, you know, mark as high likelihood with also high impact. OK, and if we take a look. The U.S.-China relations is the thing with the highest likelihood here. And so when we talk about the geopolitical tensions and we talk about what some of Trump's policies are going to be, um, you know, uh, such as lower taxes and trade barriers uh, and putting tariffs on things like China, um, you know, th those are all things impacting, um, you know, the way that Treasury yields are behaving, how they're moving. And this is, you know, all been part of the reasons and some of the story why you've been seeing TLT crash so much. Now, um, that will wrap up today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, you can sign up for my newsletter. Uh, it's called Investment Intelligence. I give out free, valuable finance and trading related content. Um, I've been putting out some really amazing trade ideas in there. So there is a website. You can go check it out. Look at how some of those previous trade ideas have resulted. Um, you know, GM was just the latest banger. We've had tons and tons of success in there, and that's completely free. You can sign up for that using the link in the description. You can also join the private uh, the the private trading group, the Investment Intelligence Discord, using promo code Powell. Uh, that will get you guys a nice discount. Um, and what's inside of there? You get twenty plus swing trade ideas every week. You get custom scripts and indicators that I use to trade, exclusive chart layouts, and exclusive intel such as unusual option activity, dark pool data, gamma levels, and more. These are just some of the results. Uh, from some of the trades that we've found, uh, you know, using the tools and resources in, inside of the Discord. Now, these are options trades, so some of these returns uh, are going to be abnormal, and they're not, you know, normal if you're trading things like shares. Uh, but one of them is going to be the Pulse Radar. Okay, the Pulse Radar is meant to be a short-term swing trading list for anything, um, you know, from a couple days to a couple weeks to a couple months. Right. So this is much more for your passive trader, uh, your passive swing trader who's not looking for new trade ideas every single day in the market uh, or looking to get in and out of a trade uh, in, in less than a day or one day. 
Um, you can sign up for just the Pulse Radar and get those uh, scripts, indicators, and also get the, the, the watch list of my breakdown every single week individually. Uh, this is one on PCG that we had, really amazing trade, where uh, we had a nice inverse head and shoulders pattern. Uh, we got the buy signal. We we're looking for the breakout on our indicator here, uh, and we got all of that combined. Uh, and you can see that later, it absolutely you know, skyrocketed past all of the bullish price targets we had to the upside, getting well above $20. Uh, and the call options, the short-term call options went up over 1,000%. And the longer term call options went up well over 200%. Uh, there also is the zone finder. This is your intraday to swing trade list. This is for people who are looking for short term trade opportunities um, that you can perhaps get out of in a single day, right? And take your profits in one day. Or for people that, you know, where, you know, you're looking for swing trades less than a week, right? Maybe one to five days. And you're looking to be more active. Uh, the zone finder is going to be perfect for you guys. And I actually exhibited um, the first zone finder trade idea in the newsletter, the free newsletter for you guys. Uh, and that went up well over 100%, um, you know, in, in just basically one day, right? In, in less than a week, in one or two days, um, you know, this trade worked out very, very well. And the zone finder is going to give you guys supply and demand zones. It's going to do all the work for you. A lot of people have issues drawing supply and demand. That's what this does. And it also gives you a risk on entry, um, you know, for buys and a risk on entry for shorts. So if you're looking for shorts, you can also scan for, you know, stocks that are, um, you know, following and meeting the short criteria. Now, that's not just it. OK, we also point out just other trades that don't pop up in the scans. Um, MU was a really nice one for a day trade. Uh, we saw this trend line here. We're looking for a breakout and a reclaim of the anchored VWAP up here, right along our key Fibonacci level at 105. Uh, and MU went from, you know, basically 100 to 105 in one day, uh, up over 4% on the day. Strong breakout into the pivot high anchored VWAP. And we were able to take very nice profits on that. Um, and TTEK was another one. We we're looking at the weekly chart setup. Um, we saw we had a nice base forming here along a key Fibonacci level. So when we zoomed into the one hour chart, we saw that there was not only a base breakout of the base above 47, but also a bull flag forming. And these are great things that we love to look for a bullish continuation pattern above a breakout pattern, a base breakout pattern. And sure enough, we came up and hit the Fibonacci target at 49.32 right over here. You guys can see that. So Lots of trade ideas, lots of opportunities inside of the Discord. Uh, you can sign up and get full access to all of them. You can sign up just for the Pulse Radar. You can sign up just for the Zone fi Finder. Uh, and I've also got two other new ones that um, are being brought out to you guys right now. If you want something just for free, sign up for that newsletter, the Investment Intelligence Newsletter. Uh, link is in the description to sign up for that as well.